The Cuban Missile Crisis began on October 16, 1962, a 13-day period where Cuba aimed Soviet Union missiles at the U.S. The missiles, located 90 miles off the coast of Florida, brought worry across the globe. During these 13 days, former U.S. President John F. Kennedy talked with the Soviet Union Prime Minister Nikita Khrushchev in an attempt to take the missiles out of Cuba. The diplomacy between these two nations was conducted between calls and letters and had helped the Cuban Missile Crisis come to an end, and without it, the Cuban Missile Crisis could have ended in a different way. The Cuban Missile Crisis resulted in the failed Bay of Pigs invasion planned on April 17, 1961. The Bay of Pigs was when Cuban citizens tried to start an uprising against Fidel Castro, but they were unsuccessful. Due to this, Soviet Union's leader, Nikita Khrushchev, planned an agreement with Fidel Castro to plant nuclear missiles in order to block future invasions. The missiles were ordered in three weeks after the decision of placing missiles in Cuba in June of 1962. A month later, on October 16, 1962, a U.S. aircraft spotted what seemed like a nuclear construction site located in Cuba. This marks the start of the tense 13-day period that will soon be called the Cuban Missile Crisis. With the flights over Cuba showing that the sites were almost ready for launch, on October 22, 1962, John F. Kennedy, the U.S. president at the time, placed a naval blockade on Cuba. The purpose of this blockade was to prevent the Soviet Union from bringing added weapons to Cuba. Kennedy called for Khrushchev to remove the missiles, but Khrushchev refused. That very same day, Kennedy sent a letter to Khrushchev stating that he won't allow major weapons, like missiles, to be delivered to Cuba. He also told Khrushchev to take down the missile bases, followed by returning all weapons to the Soviet Union. JFK also went on national television to notify fellow citizens about the quarantine on Cuba and potential risks that may stem from this crisis. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States, requiring a full retaliatory response upon the Soviet Union, said JFK. On October 24th, Khrushchev replied to Kennedy stating that the blockade was seen as an act of aggression and ships that were bound to Cuba were to continue. On October 26, JFK said a U.S. attack would get rid of the missiles, but he wanted to give more time with the diplomatic approach. Later the same day, ABC News correspondent John Scaley said that a Soviet Union agent came up to him and said an agreement could be obtained if the U.S. promised not to invade Cuba. If the U.S. promised not to invade, then the Soviets would remove their missiles. That evening, Khrushchev sent JFK a message saying what John had said earlier. Khrushchev said, if there is no intention to doom the world to the catastrophe of thermal nuclear war, then let us not only relax the forces pulling on the ends of the rope, let us take measures to untie that knot. We are ready for this. On this same day, Kennedy had written a letter to Khrushchev on October 26, 1962. In this letter, Kennedy stated that both countries wanted a solution. The U.S. wanted Cuba to stop all operations with the missiles in Cuba. If Cuba stopped all operations with the missiles, the U.S. would immediately remove the quarantine measures that were in effect and would also assure that there would be no future attacks or evasions on Cuba. If both countries had followed these agreements, then they would have been able to announce that the crisis between the United States and the Soviet Union had been averted. The next day, October 27th, Khrushchev said that any deal or solution to the crisis must have the U.S. remove former U.S. missiles from Turkey. JFK and advisors started planning for an attack, just in case the crisis could not be resolved diplomatically. 
Kennedy responded to Khrushchev's first message, which was Khrushchev stating that the blockade was an act of aggression, and said he would not attack Cuba under the circumstance that missiles needed to be removed from Cuba with supervision from the United Nations. Then, John F. Kennedy decided to ignore Khrushchev's second message, which told the United States to remove the missiles from Turkey in any deal, even though ignoring the message was dangerous. The Soviet Union wanted U.S. missiles removed from Turkey because they felt like the United States was threatening them. Attorney General Robert Kennedy met in private with Soviet Union Ambassador Anton Lee Dobryan. Robert mentioned that the U.S. was going to remove the missiles from Turkey anyway and it would be soon, but could not be a resolution for the Cuban Missile Crisis. On October 28th, Khrushchev sent out a public announcement that the missiles would be removed from Cuba. The naval quarantine continued until the Soviets removed their IL-28 bombers from Cuba. Later on November 20th, the U.S. removed the naval quarantine and in April 1963, the missiles from Turkey were finally removed. To make sure nothing like this happened again, a telephone link was set up from the White House to the Kremlin and the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty was created. The Nuclear Test Ban Treaty was signed August 5, 1963 by the U.S., Soviet Union, and United Kingdom. The purpose of the treaty was to forbid any test of nuclear weapons in the atmosphere, outer space, and underwater. Only tests underground were approved. Soon after the three countries signed, 100 other governments signed along with them. In 1977, it was extended to forbid or prohibit testing underground. Although the Cuban Missile Crisis was one of the most traumatic moments in history, the outcome of it made it possible to prevent another crisis from happening. The event affected us today because everyone knows the dangers of potential nuclear war. They also know that getting in war now with the improvements of modern technology and chemicals will turn into a nuclear disaster that will be catastrophic for more than just the countries involved. As a result, these countries are taking precautionary measures to prevent a nuclear war from ever potentially happening. The Cuban Missile Crisis opened both countries' eyes about the possibility of nuclear war and the dangers from it. The diplomacy between these two nations was the most tense moment in history, which led people around the world to be on edge. The diplomacy between these two nations was done by calls and letters, and if they hadn't been done, something terrible might have happened. If these two countries didn't come to a finalized agreement, there could have been a possibility of a nuclear war. In the end, these two countries were able to come to a civilized agreement that benefited both parties.